we are calling ourselves data crew because um, we're taking care of uh, archiving the data Indigo is producing and also helping in enriching and disseminating it further. Um, I'm Martina Tognitz, this is Sabrina Mukaboli, and we have uh, Bernhard Schiffenbus here. <laughs> So what we're going to talk about is um, today is Azure Open Atlas in Lockups. More details on that you will know. Um, these services are hosted by the CDHCH, uh, which stands for the Austrian Center for Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage, which is part is an institution of the Academy of Sciences. It was founded in 2015, and in 2019 it was obstructed and enlarged by the CH part. And it covers disciplines um, mostly, mostly dealing with language, music, history, and archaeology. And um, the institute has, uh, um, is uh, internationally internationally involved in things like Daria, Clary, and Shock. These are like European research infrastructures. Um, and the main aim of the ACBHCH is to foster the humanities by applying digital methods and tools to a wide range of academic fields. So, what are the services? Um, to give you a short insight, um, Arche is a digital archive. And I also um, wrote down some um, like guiding or main um, standards. And Arche is um, concerned with RDF data and code um, formats. Open Atlas is a database, a spatial database, which has the CIDR CRM um, ontology behind it. And then there's um, vocabs, which is there to host virtual vocabularies and um, provide them in SCOS form. Um, and the guiding principles behind these three services um, are all concerned with keeping the data lifecycle ongoing um, and to um, practice or live in good scientific practice. Um, of course, then along these guiding, uh, among these guiding principles, we have FAIR data principles for data and metadata. Um, the FAIR acronym stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. Um, then, of course, we have uh, the open principles and facets um, of open science, um, especially regarding the software behind the systems. Uh, we're trying to be open source. Um, we're also trying to have open data accessible to everyone. And then, well, the other principles, um, I think for, for a special case are not so, um, not, not so relevant. And then also, uh, we're very much interested in providing linked open data to, um, not just have data readable and usable for humans, but also to have it when it's on the web to have it like um, be able to share it with other systems of databases and so on. Um, then this is a bit the technical part. So we have some uh, standards that we're adhering to, and a lot of them come from the um, we um, W three consortium, the, the World Wide Web Consortium, uh, the the so called Semantic Web Standards, and then there we have the SCOS and RBF and so on. Um, and then there's JSON LD for linked open data. And then, um, since we're dealing also a lot with metadata, we come along um, some um, standards like CyberCM, um, IPTC metadata, EXIF, and XMP. And if you want to mo know more about it, you can ask um, in the questions or later. Uh, we're moving on. So, uh, what is ASIA? ASIA is a, um, so the acronym stands for a resource center uh, for the humanities. And it was established in 2017 and is basically a digital archive for humanity stuff. So it's very much concerned with preserving digital data for the long term. And it um, has a certification, the so called for trust seal, um, since 2017, and that it has to be renewed every three years. And so, what does ASHA do? It preserves data. Um, in various formats. So we have plain text, text documents, PDF documents, and then we also have images, spreadsheets, databases, audio, 
video, 3D data, geospatial data, and many more, whatever uh, scientists are delivering to us. Uh, but the important thing is that um, the files have to be provided in format suitable for long-term preservation. Um, then we are also looking um, for the case that the file names comply with our naming rules, which um, narrow down the selection of characters to provide like widest compatibility across systems and programs. And um, we also like to have as much metadata as we can um, that is possible. And Asia has a dedicated metadata schema. And then on the other hand, when data is in Asia, we have many ways to like spread it out again. Um, and for this, we have the assignation services and um, the API. Um, and um, each collection in Asia and every public resource is, gets an, a persistent identifier. And then with this identifier, you can then like query for a specific dissemination service. And uh, for example, you can um, get images via the IIIF service, or you can get the metadata for an image via an EXIF um, service. Or you can also like uh, via the API uh, access general metadata and then uh, without knowing the uh, persistent identifiers get um, like get resources out of um, Asia and then on based on metadata decide which ones you'd like to um, process further. And to visualize these dissemination services, we have uh, here an example. So this is the dissemination services are presented as buttons below a resource. And then we have, for example, the IIIF endpoint view image and the thumbnail service, which all somehow provide an image in various formats. Or we have the um, EXIF endpoint, which provides the EXIF metadata from an image in JSON format. And this then, for example, Open Atlas is fetching this information. Or also, um, if um, so, so Indigo is building up a platform. Um, this information could be fetched either directly from Asia or from Atlas. And um, this is how a data set in Asia looks like. Um, this is a test collection from um, Indigo that we got. And this is like the top collection, the top level of the collection. And then if we dig in further, you get like an image preview and for all the things we try to like um, we get the metadata and we also display it and there's basic metadata but you could also um in an expert view, um, get a view on more meta metadata yeah one i would like to do yeah yeah i have a present shortly open atlas open atlas is an open source database software initiated about 10 years ago by an archaeologist uh, Eichel. <coughs> And it is still developed, especially to acquire, manage, and edit research data from the from various fields from humanities, but especially history and archaeology. Um, we try to record complex relations as simple as possible. That means that we try to use our CDOCM or the CDOCRM, which is an international standard, which is used by quite many sites right now, many databases. Um, we try to um, hide this ontology from the user that the user can concentrate on simply inputting their data and connecting with them, but in a way that everybody can reuse it. Um, the greatest um, advantage, in my opinion, right now is on um, Atlas is that it is very flexible. So you can enter um, history, uh, data from history, historical projects, archaeological projects, and can also enter them in the same database. And that's this, it's what's make it quite special. You can we are very flexible. And with um, Indigo, we now can handle also nowadays arts, uh, graffiti arts. And yeah, this is how our user base uh, looks like with a new bit um, uh, test data from Indigo. Yeah, yes. And so the other key component we are going to present is uh, the vocab service. As you know, when we describe things, when we apply metadata, we need concepts and terms. And these concepts can be organized in lists, which are controlled by a curator or team of curators. 
and we can model these uh, lists and or more complex structures in a machine readable form. These products uh, can be stored on the vocab service. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can have um, multilingual vocabulary. So you have one concept which is linked to different uh, terms in different languages. And we have unique identifiers to refer to these concepts. And we can also organize these concepts according to hierarchical relationships like child, parent, or groups, associative relationships. Uh, as you can see here, uh, some technical details. So we can serve these vocabularies to other systems in, deep, in a wide array of formats. And uh, you can also download the whole vocabulary or use the API. Uh, in general, we use this cost standard, which is also part of the uh, semantic web standards. Uh, and the software on which our service is based is Cosmos. Uh, here I also linked the GitHub page of this software. Uh, one nice thing, uh, you don't have to have a uh, very deep technical knowledge to work with vocabularies. We have developed the tool that allows to create and modify vocabularies with a GUI uh, and then directly import them into the vocabs uh, service. Uh, when the vocabulary is published, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is the case of the Indigo Pizarros. You can see here the hierarchy or you can switch to the groups view and you have some general metadata about the vocabulary. And if you select one concept, for example, burners, then you get the specific page uh, for the concept and you get some metadata, editorial note, and more information. And uh, you can download the concept or even the whole vocabulary. This is the description of the general workflow. So how all these components are brought together. So basically, um, we have the photographs which are created during the acquisition process. Of course, they come with initial set of metadata or they are batch processed with some basic metadata. Then uh, these photographs go uh, through the whole processing uh, phase. And of course, in the end, we have the auto-rectified images with where no distortions are there and uh, they are directly comparable with each other. And of course, we have a rich metadata. We take everything and we store it into R. Okay, why everything? Uh, because we want people, uh, we want the process to be as transparent as possible and um, researchers, users to have the possibility to, to look into all the products of the process and even recreate our results. So reproduce our results. Uh, we store everything into R, which provides, as Martina said, long-term storage. And we have also some basic metadata uh, through our own metadata scheme. Uh, then we have the vocabularies on the vocab services, and we import both into Open Atlas, which is the uh, service which is a bit more interactive uh, for the users and the team of Project Indigo, where they can uh, annotate uh, the graffiti and enrich the metadata, and also have uh, data available in the Cydox CRM um, according to the Cydox CRM ontology. Uh, Open Atlas also works uh, as the backend for uh, the web platform of Project Indigo. And of course, when the data is updated in Open Atlas, we can also uh, update it on uh, RFK. Uh, RFK, uh, we have prepared um, RFK uh, for delivering all this data. And uh, we, we are uh, importing uh, a test batch. We already imported the test batch from Indigo. We have different kinds of formats, uh, both for our images in various stages of processing, as you can see, like raw uh, photos, JPEG or geotips. And we have information that helps us create the 2D and 3D models. And uh, as regards the curation strategy, we, we create also the really small things because it is important that also file names are consistent so you can track to which file uh, to which part of the collection a single file uh, is related to we provide formats that are easily compatible and we also have a script that takes uh, uh, metadata which is embedded into an image and uh, transforms it automatically into uh, metadata for the archive schema and of course licensing in another important question we uh, deal with uh, as regards the relationship between Arche and Open Atlas, uh, this is done maybe uh, through our uh, API. So this is a bit more technical, 
let's say we uh, how Arca is structured. We have a basic API with core functionality. So as you know, IT people like acronyms. So CRUD stays for uh, create, uh, read, update, delete. So the basic functionality is working with the files. But then we have smaller uh, services, microservices like these dissemination services that. Uh, do specific things with specific formats. In this case, for example, the EXIF endpoint, you can take all the embedded metadata of an image without even downloading the image. So you get a JSON file, uh, which has all the info, or uh, as Martin already mentioned, the Tumblr service where you can ask for the image in a compressed uh, way. So according to a specific resolution or the triple IM uh, endpoint. Uh, if you are more interested in the RK API, you can also check the documentation on the GitHub page. Yeah. <clears throat> when the data is done in uh, Arche publicly, we um, set up a new Matlas database uh, for Indigo and establish a connection to walkups for the types and for Arche for files and metadata. Um, as I said, walkups uses uh, Cosmos API, and um, this is an API which many uh, vocabularies use and uh, we implemented a feature that you can import any Cosmos um, hierarchy with a couple of clicks in no Atlas and yeah, it fetches a GeoJSON and you see here the um, hierarchy you see before you saw before in the uh, vocab slide here it is imported in book Atlas and when the uh, vocab's vocabulary is imported then we can uh, import the data from Archen. We use the um, simulation services uh, Masumiano um, explained. So we take thumbnails, not the big pictures because they're quite large. Um, we take the metadata and then we map the metadata to the CDOC CRM. So we, um, yeah, we can then um, yeah, provide a structured data from the from the metadata. So when was the graffiti uh, photographed? Where was it photographed? Which is the link to the IF server and so on. And yeah, and on this page, I want to thank you, thank Indigo. Um, we've got a great um, teamwork for the great work. And um, you know, what does we not see? We don't make services for the project. But uh, we also uh, say the, the project enrich every project enrich open models because every feature we programmed is also there for other projects. So um, with Indigo, we um, have features like uh, the production of artifacts, like the graffiti, we improved our time tracking um, system with hours, minutes, and seconds, we improved our database with 3D um, geometries, importing the vocabulary from Vocops and Arche. And we also now can have a complete um, what it that detailed structure. So uh, each can graffiti can be better described in a structured way, which also a machine can read. Yeah. yeah. This is again the workflow. Actually, this is the last slide apart from the uh, thank you slide. And so if you have any questions, uh, you can write to us. Uh, of course, we are available now for discussing any topic of the presentation. So thank you. You have a very much in the great presentation. Uh, I can take questions now in the audience, please. No questions? Okay, then I have one. Um, so you've already built off many projects and open up as Archer, which I've seen a uh, in how far would you say is uh, Indigo different and what were the projects that you've uh, been dealing with mostly before? We have been of Matlas team mostly with historical and archaeological projects. And um, I would say most historical projects doesn't have so much, so much data. Yeah, the sources, maybe places, actors and so on. These are a couple of thousand, two thousand, three thousand data sets. And um, archaeological data is quite different. They have more, but with Arche, there uh, with uh, Indigo, there will be so much data, so much um, also large files which Arche has to handle. And this is for us completely new. Also, the, this 
this whole workflow. You see, it's for us completely new. We have we had to discuss how we do it, and um, there are some things maybe to improve. But yeah, yes, it's... especially um, so with Asia, we already archive projects that were done in um, in Atlas, but just like a so database got done. And now we have the case in Indigo that um, it's a live project where we first have the data in Asia, it is then fetched to, um, into Atlas and enriched there. And then this is why the arrow is like dotted is uh, we we are still having have to devise how get, can we get this information back to the archive to like have this um, further on the journey. 